Well, in most cases, it's very counterintuitive. If you see a baby with a deformity like this, I think most physicians and even parents could imagine the magnitude of an operation and they may feel that the best time to operate is after the baby is bigger, after the baby's fully grown. Um, it seems like they'd go through a big operation and what we know now is that the opposite is true. And so over the years, the time at which we do surgery and the time at which we get the best results is actually much, much earlier. Many of these babies are treated before a year of age. Traditionally, even I can remember babies coming in and routinely having x-rays done of the skull. Frequently those x-rays would not really show anything unusual and then all of those babies would require CAT scans. And when babies get CAT scans, they're exposed to radiation. These are young, growing brains, so we're concerned about unnecessary radiation. And, um, uh, and we're also concerned about the fact that babies will require anesthesia to have a CAT scan, even though the CAT scan is quick. So, that's changed dramatically over the years. Number one, here at NYU, we've been able to cut down the dose of radiation on the CAT scans. So it's a small fraction of what it used to be. Uh, and that's made possible by very elaborate software that's uh, integrated with the CAT scans. But I think even more important than that is, with our experience, we found that CAT scans are frequently not necessary for these babies. Where we were using CAT scans was simply to make the diagnosis, for us to be able to see which cranial sutures were fused prematurely, and then how to plan the surgery. And with our experience, we found that our physical examination is at least as accurate as the results of the CAT scan. So we still get CAT scans in select cases, but frequently we're able to make the right diagnosis right up front, and we're frequently able to save those babies from having to undergo an additional anesthetic, an additional study. What we're doing here is very unique. This is an extremely experienced team. We take care of a high volume of babies, children, and even adults with craniosynostosis. And so we have innovative components to our treatment at every step of the way. And that begins with the time at which parents and the patient will meet the team. They'll see all of the team members involved, and the team members include a craniofacial surgeon, a plastic surgeon like myself. will involve a pediatric neurosurgeon as well as a pediatric anesthesiologist, nurse practitioners, geneticists, even speech therapists, social workers, special craniofacial orthodontists and dentists. Uh, everyone is available on our team and frequently meet the family during their first visit. So how we take care of the family from the minute we meet them is unique. We design our interactions to minimize the amount of travel back and forth. We try to make it as easy as possible for them to see the specialist that they need all at the same time.